Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my colleagues today for support of House Resolution 269, which designates today, April 22nd, 2015, as Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania Day. The Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania was created by an act of the legislature in 1963 and opened to the public on this day 30 years ago. Since then, with a vast array of artifacts, images, and historic locomotives, the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania has educated millions of visitors on the rich history railroading has in the Commonwealth, as well as the importance of the contemporary railroading industry that continues today. Last year alone, more than 145,000 visitors traveled to Strasburg in Lancaster County to visit the museum. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the profound impact railroading has made on our Commonwealth's economy and culture, it is no wonder why so many people were drawn to this museum. Pennsylvania is nicknamed the Keystone State because it has held a key position in the economic, social, and political development of the United States. And railroads, as, which has been a theme all week, has been central to that development. The first steam locomotive built in America was intended to encourage the construction of railroads in Pennsylvania. The builder of the locomotive, Colonel John Stevens, recognized the potential value of Pennsylvania's timber, minerals, and its fertile farmlands, and knew that railroads could help transport these goods to market and transform our state's economy. Although unforeseen at the time, Railroads would eventually change the course of history for our commonwealth and our nation. And as we learned yesterday, during the Civil War, Pennsylvania's massive Weber railroads gave the North a major advantage over the Confederacy. President Lincoln even traveled by train to Gettysburg to deliver his famous address. And in the final days of the war, his, bo his body was carried over a series of railroads that stopped in Philadelphia, as we learned yesterday after he was assassinated and also York and Harrisburg en route, en route to its resting place in Illinois, which was 150 years ago. Mr. Speaker, this General Assembly has played a significant role in pushing Pennsylvania to railroading's forefront. In 1823 and then 1846, this legislator passed a charter establishing the Pennsylvania Railroad Company, and this was to become a giant among American railroads, representing the consolidation of more than 600 smaller railroads extending from Philadelphia to New York to Washington, D.C., Chicago, and St. Louis. The main line passed through Strasburg, where the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania stands today. And another railroad that has played a significant role in Pennsylvania's history is the famous Horseshoe Curve, which runs across the base of the Allegheny Mountains in Blair County. The Horseshoe Curve allowed trains to carry vital resources such as coal and steel through difficult terrain. Recognizing the importance of the horseshoe curve in transporting troops and resources for the Allied front during World War II, the Nazis had placed it on a list of potential targets in our country in 1942. So in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, Pennsylvania maintains its place as a leader in railroading as our Commonwealth has more operating railroads today than any other state in the nation. And that is why today, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to recognize the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum's success and the guests that you acknowledged earlier. And I want to give a shout out to, to uh, your former colleague, uh, Representative Jerry Shore, and, and the rest of his members today of the part of the Railroad Museum. Thank you, sir. Chair, thanks the gentleman. I ask the gentleman, the Honorable Jerry Shuler, to please stand again for a round of applause. Welcome back, Jerry.